next, I would like to introduce Dr. Luke Stewart um, from Finisar. So Luke's interest in science peaked in high school um, and eventually that led him to do his PhD in Macquarie. Um, and after that, he took on, I believe, what is my role at Finisar as, a, <laughs> as an optical engineer. Um, and he stayed there um, and through his work, contributed to a lot of the wavelengths and lesser switches that they have, which you'll hear about. Um, yeah, so I, I guess I won't steal your limelight. Cool. Thanks, Luke. Thank you. Just the... Uh... Yes. Here. Cool, thanks everyone. Right, so I'm going to be giving a talk today about Finisar WSS. Um, I've sort of titled it a history of innovation because the company has now been going for almost 20 years this year. Sorry Luke, I'm just going to interrupt. Is that okay? You guys, you're okay? Everyone good here? Yeah, I might need to point it off. Um, so yeah, so we'll go through a bit of the history, but also the functionality of the WSS we do and, and sort of how we go about um, designing and manufacturing these. So I guess this is kind of the official blurb from our website in terms of what we do. Um, so we provide world-class wavelength management components and subsystems, including wavelength selective switches. Um, I'll go through what these are through the talk, but basically these are switches that are used in fiber optic networks. And for those of you who know, don't know, we're sort of located in Sydney, in Rosebury, sort of halfway between the city and the airport. And to give you a bit of a snapshot of what the company looks like right now, we've got 270 staff. Um, I think the workforce is very technical. We've got 125 bachelor's degrees, 50 masters, 30 PhDs. Um, so a lot of emphasis on um, technical know-how. And um, we spend about 15% of our revenue on R&D, which is quite high for the industry. And um, this was the latest one here. And these are just some, some pictures from our clean rooms in Sydney where we do a lot of manufacturing. So the brief history, um, Finisar was started, I guess, as in Ghana back in 2001. Uh, we've got two of the founders in the room tonight with um, Steve and Simon, and I guess, over time, they went through different funding to try to keep the company going and, and developing this first LCOS based WSS. In 2006, it was bought out by Optium and then later by Finisar in 2008 when Finisar and Optium merged. Um, more recently, two years ago, Finisar was merged with um, 2.6 Photonics. So we're sort of now part of this bigger uh, company. So we still operate in Australia under the name Finisar, but 2.6 itself has about 22,000 worldwide employees in 75 locations. And they have interests in all sorts of areas. So communications, where we focus on, but also industrial lasers, life sciences, automotive, semiconductor, aerospace and consumer electronics. Um, so very widespread sort of fields there. So what do we do? I guess Simon touched on the importance of communication networks and um, Obviously, fiber optic networks uh, in high demand, particularly with COVID last year. I think some of the statistics from different uh, countries were sort of indicating 30 to 40 percent increase in um, volume through um, these fiber optic cables within a week of COVID starting. So there's huge influx of data, and the networks sort of had to cope. Um, up here, you can see all the submarine cables that are the linking all the countries around the world, and um, this is one of the US connectivity maps. This is basically all the different um, providers and all their maps. Essentially, at any time where you have two of these um, fibers crossing, um, a point where you go from one fiber to more than one fiber, you need a switch. And WSS are the switches that are used in those situations. Um, increasingly, they're also used in data centers because of the amount of um, traffic that gets put through data centers. And Finisar are the market leaders in, in WSS. I had another point here, just as actually a comment a friend of mine made the other day was that, well, we're using 5G now, so we don't really need fiber optics. But I guess the, the point is that even, even all these sort of 5G and wireless networks all end up eventually going into a fiber optic network because the, the distances are so long that the 5G and 4G don't make sense. So um, it actually just creates 
a big bottleneck in these fiber optic networks and you know, there's more and more cables being deployed to, to deal with a lot of this. So just the basic functionality of the WSS, essentially what we're trying to do is if this is a, an incoming fiber optic um, which has a whole bunch of signals on it at different wavelengths, the wavelength selective switch can switch any one of those channels to any one of the output ports um, and it can also provide attenuation on any one of those channels as well. Um, so the attenuation function is one that's used a lot. So for example, if you've got all these different power levels through here and then you're about to go through a um, fiber amplifier, you may want to pre-bias all of the attenuation so that after it goes through an amplifier, it comes out nice and flat. The, the original WSS used to have a sort of one input port or an N output ports with N typically being between four and 20. Um, also been used in reverse, so you can have 20 ports going into a one common port. What's very popular now is uh, dual WSS. So um, we have two WSS in a single box um, with about 36 fibers available in these sort of N by N configurations. So a typical one would be a two WSS, two common ports and 34 output ports. Um, this is an example of one of our dual WSS, this is to give you an idea of size. Um, so this is a two by two by 20 WSS switch. I'll sort of leave this up here so you guys can have a look later. Um, this is the new generation, so a lot smaller than the previous generations, but there's a lot of, um, there's 48 fibers coming out of that with um, yeah, a lot of technology. The latest cutting edge is about, we're doing 60 port WSS now. And we're also looking at quad WSS. So this is four independently controlled WSS all inside the one box. The technology is based on LCOS, liquid crystal and silicon. Um, it's basically a display technology. You can sort of almost like a TV display or a projector display. You can sort of see here images drawn on it. The makeup of that is basically just a CMOS substrate with liquid crystal in here and then a cover glass with an alignment layer and indium tin oxide. Um, this allows you to electrically address pixels. And this is basically how you take LCOS and make a WSS. This is sort of the building blocks. Up high. So we start with uh, an array of optical fibers. Um, so your input will come in on one of these. We have some optics that control polarization. Um, the reason we do that is because the LCOS has a high polarization dependence and we have to make sure that the whole system doesn't see that. Uh, we have a bunch of imaging optics and importantly a dispersion element. So this takes all of the wavelengths that are on this signal and spreads them out across the LCOS. And once you have a spread of the wavelengths in the LCOS, you can then address each of the wavelengths separately. So at this point I can look at the red end and I can use the pixel to switch this end or the blue end or anything else. And you would use the LCOS to switch those to different output ports. And so we use what's called holographic beam steering to achieve this. So you can apply a voltage to every single pixel in the back plane of the LCOS. That voltage will change the refractive index of the liquid crystal, which gives you a phase change. And if you can change by up to two pi the phase and you can reset and basically create this sort of tilted um, mirror that the, the light sees so you can switch from one port to another. And this is kind of a, a picture of that here. So a plain wavefront coming in, seeing this sawtooth grating and going off at a different angle. So that's how the light gets switched through the different ports. And this is just um, bringing all that together. So all your different ports up here, dispersing the light onto the LCOS, and then depending on the, the ramp, uh, depending on the, the uh, length of this sawtooth grating, you can switch to a different port. So you can switch the blue up to this port, the red to a different port. You can sort of do any sort of combination of those. The other key part of the technology is what we call flex grid. Um, so it's ability for customers to customize channel shapes. Um, so you can see here just choosing any kind of width channel you want. And the reason that's important is, I guess, 
um, I guess the legacy networks and um, WSS used to have fixed width channels, which was fine because you could set up your signals with um, data running through each of these different wavelengths and you could set up your channels to switch those wavelengths. But as people wanted to start putting more and more data through those transceivers, the spectrum became wider. And so you could no longer use a standard 50 gigahertz or 100 gigahertz channel to switch that. With FlexGrid, with the LCOS, we can just turn on more pixels and switch a slightly wider channel, and that problem gets fixed. So there was this, this concept for the customers of future-proofing their networks so that they could choose to add in any kind of data rates in the future, any kind of spectral widths, and the network would handle it and the WSS would handle it. The other benefit from this came super channels, so putting in a whole bunch of channels, a whole bunch of signals in the one channel. And the benefit there was you could bunch the channels up a lot closer, you could bunch the signals closer, not have as many guard bands and get more spectral efficiency. And this was just a bit of a demonstration we did for some customers last year. So with COVID, we couldn't uh, travel, but we did this live demonstration for some of our customers and um, on our latest quad WSS. You can see one of the other key things is you can do intra-channel attenuation here, um, creating whatever kind of signals you want. We sort of showed the bat signal, um, but it's really up to whatever you want to put on that LCOS you can, you can basically do, whatever you can draw. And so this is basically over the last 20 years, all the, the world first WSS um, uh, results that we've had. And so I guess back in 2006, there was the first shipments of the, the first LCOS based WSS, um, which continued through to high port counts. Um, we had dual WSS, we had the introduction of FlexGrid, which is now industry standard. Um, and even over the last few years, we've had a lot of new innovations. So we've had first uh, extended band, which is a wider telecommunic telecommunication band, quad WSS, C plus L, a whole range of them um, based on some new platforms that we're working on. One of the key driving forces for us really is the customer wants a cheaper, cheaper per bit way to send stuff through the network. So a lot of the stuff we do ends up just being driven um, by the customer wanting to send stuff down the network cheaper. So if we want more high performance channels, it just allows them to jam more channels into the spectrum, wider wavelength ranges, more channels, a whole bunch of stuff. There's other, other factors that we have to look at as well in terms of size and, and functionality, um, but a lot of it is cost driven. Um, and we have to innovate to try to get, I guess, more, more out of the WSS for the customer. So that's just basically it. So Finisar has been developing WSS for about 20 years now. There's still the market leaders in WSS and we're continuing to try to innovate and create world first. This is just a photo of the, the latest photo of the group at our most recent Christmas party pre-COVID. So thank you. Thanks, Luke. Any questions from the floor or online? Sorry. Thank you for your presentation of Finisar. Um, do you use commercial LCOS or you built it yourself? Actually, do you have liquid crystal fabrication facility in your company? Uh, we do a bit of both, but yeah, so, sorry, sorry, I'm really bad. Um, we do both. So I guess we have used in the past commercial LCOS, uh -huh. but um, we are now sort of manufacturing our own. Um, to get the properties right for the WSS rather than from a display technology. Okay, nice. So there's subtleties in terms of what you need to Okay. Thank you. I had more of a technical question. So um, you specified actually you have a quite a large window of operation, minus 5 to 60, did you say? Yeah, that's operation and storage minus 40 to 85 degrees. Oh, great. So to, to guarantee such a window, I was wondering, um, is the liquid crystal that stable or do you have to package in a way that it kind of maintains? Yeah, so... Liquid crystal um, is not stable at those temperatures, so typically the, at least the liquid crystal has to be temperature controlled to some level. Um, 
there is a range of, of temperatures where it can be used. Um, but yeah, that, that is one of the things that has to be done. You can't operate it too cold. It, at some point it will just freeze or at some point it'll, it'll just get too hot to be, it moves around too much basically. All right, unfortunately with time, we're gonna have to end it there. Um, thank you, Luke, for your time oh, and for coming and some chocolate for you too. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you.